Hello, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to Heart of a Hobbit here on the uh, Lotro Twitch channel. And I am your host, Little Redhead, and I will be taking you around the world of Middle Earth today as we uh, wander around the Spring Festival. So we just got into a conversation, actually, uh, I just was part of a conversation where we're talking about the shrew pets because currently the Spring Festival is on. And one of the things you can do during this festival is pick up uh, tomes to get these different shrews. Oh, okay, so I have the Dusty Shrew and the Spotted Shrew so far. So I've got this one and I've got this one, but I haven't yet found the Plain Shrew. Oh, that's funny. Uh, or the Large Shrew. I don't have either of those. Okay, okay, so uh, I still need Large and Plain. Yeah, so the Spotted one, um, the Spotted Shrew you get through, there's a, um, a quest to pick flowers during this festival and um, sometimes you're picking a flower and you find a tome of the shrew underneath there. So uh, that is one of the reasons why I have the tome of the spotted shrew already. And I think the dusty one probably got that from the shrew stomping in the um, festival garden that is in Dylan. So I'm not going to take you around all of that today. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, feel free to pop into the chat and um, ask questions. Uh, but my plan is to um, take us into some fe uh, festival instances today. So we're going to do a little bit of prep work and then we are going to go and do some fun things. So. I am first going to start off by talking to my favorite VIP rewards vendor, Wenda Cranesville, over here. And I'm going to pick up my subscriber jug and my subscriber town services. Thank you very much, Wenda. So I click on that, and that gives me that. Oh my gosh, I forgot I haven't emptied my inventory from the last time we were out and about. That would be like a week ago. <laughs> it's a mess. It's just a mess. I don't even. All right. Well, actually, let me see if I can throw some things in my shared storage because now I have a shared storage in my pocket. And let's see. I have eight room. Okay. Well, the chair can go in, and the flower, and the bench. I'm gonna put the bench in somebody else's house, but um, they were not available. Oh, you know what? I'll keep that in case we want to talk about that. Um, let's see. Did I put? I went ahead and picked up the. Um, a spring festival item, the honeycomb cloak. Did I put that in my shirt? Oh, I need to put it in my wardrobe. Okay, so we can. It's bound to account, so I can't even give it to give it away. All right, so we're just going to destroy that because it's in my wardrobe now, and that's where it needs to be. And um, let's see, what else have I got here? I don't know. I just got random stuff. We'll uh, we'll get that to be mostly started so far. Um, let's go ahead and pick up the Hobbit presents while I'm here. And um, a silver one, that is one you get every day. And then I have a gold one because I'm a subscriber. And so you get one of those every week it comes around. So I'll go ahead and open that. I got a decorated heritage rune of legend. Well, that's cool. Um, all right, so those are in my inventory now as well. So why don't we, I need to go and pick up the festival wrapper from um, Sergeant Tom. Would you like to join me on that? I will go ahead and take us to Bree. Wait, you just ran past me. <laughs> Come on back. <laughs> so there's four shrews that you can collect and yes, as uh, as you finish collecting them, I think there's a title like Shrew Keeper or no, I don't know. I'll look here in a second. Yes, there's a deed for it. There is a deed for it, but I can't remember what you get for finishing the deed. We'll take a look here in a second. So I got to Bree. We're taking this free horse that's sitting right next to the stable master. It's like a couple stalls down from him. Uh, we take that and it takes us to the Bree Festival Grounds, which don't look ominous like that. They look much more cheery. There we go. <laughs> so actually, I'm going to pull up the deed tracker because it's a lot faster to find things in here because I can search. And 
then, okay, so class race epic and shrew. Uh, let's see, Taming of the Shrews? No, that's Defeat Pesky Shrews. Shrewd Companions, that's it. Call the pes So you have to actually call the shrew out as well, um, not just acquire it, but you have to, like, you know, pull it out as a cosmetic pet, and then it counts. So you have to call the Plain Shrew to your side, the Spotted Shrew, the Dusty Shrew, and the Large Shrew, and you get the title, The Merciful Boot. There you go. <laughs> Very silly. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to go over here, though, to these ruins, and we're going to talk to this fellow here, Sergeant Tom, and he has our daily wrapper for us. So go out and participate in 10 Spring Festival activities. We're going to accept that. So I got that. Now we're good to go. Now, anytime we do an instance that is part of the Spring Festival, um, it counts towards that 10. Now, one of the things you might want to do is, though, uh, every day that you're doing your 10, is go over here to Iron Bullrush, and he has this um, pretty parched party goers quest, which he's like, hey, you know, I saw people are parched all over, so go give them some wine. Um, and the nice thing about this one is not only does you get legendary experience and spring leaves, but you also get 50 virtue experience each time you do this. Oh, and that reminds me, I need to pull out. Uh-oh, who has it? Oh, I have it, okay, good. <laughs> the Fateful Toolkit um, is really nice because you get plus one on any tokens you earn. So this spring leaves, instead of two, I'm gonna get three. <laughs> so that's pretty nice. Okay, so we're gonna do um, there's two different instances that we can do. Well, actually, I'm going to deliver some wine first. Hang on a second. So the first thing you do is you, they want you to carry wine to the northeast table. So you go out kind of like you're going towards the Brie Festival, so the Brie Town Horse, and it's this group of people, or this canopy, this red and white canopy is what you're looking for. Sometimes there aren't many people there, so if it's been a while since wine was delivered, um, there won't be a lot of people there. All right, so then you go back and you grab another round and you take it pretty much straight ahead of you. And where do you get that faithful toolkit? Oh yeah, I'll let me show you that. Hang on a second, let me deliver that wine. There's no time limit on this wine thing, by the way, which is really nice. I mean, there is once you pick it up, it has a, a bar, but when I can like log off and come back and do this tomorrow, um, which I have done before. Uh, the faithful toolkit, which is this one right here, uh, that I have on, it came with the Fate of Gundabad Ultimate Fan Edition. So it was the, the biggest of the um, bundles of the Fate of Gundabad. Oh, thanks. And uh, before has just put a link to that in the chat there. So now if you have purchased uh, Fate of Gundabad, like any level, um, maybe you got like the base level and you're like, hey, oh, yeah, I'd like to upgrade to the next one. Um, you can totally do that. Oh, check this out. This woman is so funny. So she's like, I was eating that. And then <laughs> this musician, oh, wait, this woman standing in her food. And then at some point, I think she dances maybe. Well, maybe not. But yes. So we have people standing in her food and sometimes she makes comments about that and it amuses me greatly. So. <laughs> <laughs> the spring pheasants. Oh, there's two spring pheasants, Tom and Jerry. <laughs> All right, so we're going to turn that in, and it's three, two spring leaves, which turns to three. Ooh, ooh. Um, yeah. Um, oh, you have it, but you didn't notice that. So if you bought the, um, the Ultimate Fan Edition, you got the Fateful Toolkit, and you also got the Gundabad Toolkit. The Gundabad Toolkit gives you, I think, bonus Gundabad tokens, um, but the Fateful Toolkit gives you bonus, here, I'll read it again. Um, set of tools usable by any crafting profession grants bonus festival and landscape wa wallet barter tokens when equipped. Uh, bonus applies to landscape wallet tokens up through Gundabad level 140. So um, it does include Festival tokens. It includes Gundabad tokens because I've worn this and got the bonus, excuse me, the bonus Gundabad tokens because we were running some um, missions there. It, um, it applies to the in-league 
and the ale association if you do those deliveries because when you do those deliveries they give you a um oh what you call it token here i'll go walk over to those guys well i'll just ride over to those guys um yeah so these guys like if you do hmm yeah so if you do any of these delivery quests and they give you for example a badge of dishonor for the ale association or if you do like the in-league ones, um, when you deliver those, they give you a badge of taste. If you're wearing the Fateful Toolkit, you get a bonus plus one. So you get two badges of dishonor and two badges of taste for every single delivery. It's really awesome. Yeah, it, it gives you basically a plus one and one, yeah, 1 1.1 rounds up to two. They round up, which is really nice, really snug, yeah. Because not everybody would be nice to round up like that. I, I, I could absolutely see them rounding down or something like that. So, yeah. Mm hmm Yeah, like if you had to do something that gave you 10 to get an 11th. I don't know. But anyway, that's really pretty awesome. That is a pretty sweet deal. So, um, all right. So, I don't, we're not going to do any of those right now. Now, um, if you are somebody who... <laughs> Kina Han said, not sure if you got it, you can't see it, you'll check all your alts, perhaps you put it on one of them. Now, um, yes, definitely check and see who you might have put it on. Um, the, the package went to wherever you logged in first, you know, after you purchased it. So, um, yeah, it would have been delivered to the first character on the first server you logged into. I intentionally logged in here to Treebeard because this is where I'm playing primarily, and I wanted to make sure I got that, um, that toolkit here. But um, they did a two-parter thing because the, um, this is the first time SSG is doing it where you can buy like a lower package and you can upgrade by paying the difference, and then you get the goodies in the second one that you didn't get in the first one. Um, so people who bought the middle package upgraded to the highest package and they ended up getting like there was something that was already in the bane that middle package that was also in the second one i think it was the gundabad um, toolkit and th it, they were given it again so instead of having like one gundabad one fateful they got one gundabad and one gundabad and one fateful which is a total of two gundabads and one fateful um so those of us who went and bought the ultimate straight up got one good bad one faithful so we were one behind you know and for example um and so they were like oh that's not really fair to the people who bought the big one to start off with so we're just gonna give everybody that you know missing part that people who got the middle and then upgraded got which i thought was really nice um so uh, i think and that came in separately but if you bought so when when they did that bonus gift to those of us who'd bought the the big one um straight up they it did go again to the first character you logged in with when they made that when they pushed that through and that time i logged into laurelin first so those bonus goodies went to laurelin um but i'd already had the the main goodies here on treebeard i know that's a really long answer for probably more than what you were looking for but hopefully you find it <laughs> It's a pretty neat deal. Um, but so if you're on multiple servers, it can get a little more complicated. I, so it was kind of what I guess I was trying to say. <laughs> in a long, yeah, <laughs> in a roundabout way, that's really what I was trying to say, is that if you're on multiple servers, it might get complicated because you gotta figure out where did you log in first. And then if you bought the ultimate package first, then everything went to that character except for when they added on the extra stuff. Uh, but the Fateful Toolkit would have already been the first thing you got anyway. Now, if you did the thing, the middle one, and then upgraded, the Fateful Toolkit would have ended up on whichever server you logged in first after that upgrade. But if you're only on one server, all of that is moot for you. Okay, shall we go do some bees, big business? Yay, let's do it. All right, Aphidil, you are the leader. So um, there are festival instances, and I will show you what they look like. Um, it's not a tear thing. <laughs> You're funny. 
<laughs> so, okay, so let me explain uh, real quick before I pop in there what, what we're talking about. So during um, festivals, during m m many of the festivals, four of them now, there are instances that are only available during that festival. Okay, so in this case, there's, there's these two. There's Spring uh, Bee's Big Business, and then there's Boss from the Vaults, Naruhel the Red Maid. Um, the Boss from the Vaults is only available to characters level 50 and above, and it is always run at a level of this case is a six person instance and you can run it at tier one tier two or tier three okay now the and that one is more raid feeling right like it's got some mechanics and you've got to really pay attention you got to work together and all of that especially tier three the bees big business is um is more lighthearted. um it's cute you know you're helping the bees go out they're going to go pollinate and you're going to help them out that you can run at a size of one person. You can run it with two as a duo. You can win it as, run it as a trio, or you can run it as a six person. Um, there's no tiers to play with. It's all tier one. And this you could do starting at level 10. So you can do it as early as a level 10 character. Okay, so we are doing, um, running this at level 60. So it's, our, it's on level for us. And we're running it the size of a small fellowship. All right, so I'm going to travel now. So we go in and we're in, whew, what kind of, what part of the world are we in? Losnach? Losnach. Hang on. Which is beyond our level in the server, which is really hilarious. Here we go. So we're in Losnach. Losarnach. Um, and we are down here by the river. So really pretty area, actually. Um, and so it's really funny because on Treebeard, our, our server is level cap. 60. Are you guys in the boat? Nay, Exian. Exianit. Not yet. Not yet. Oh, uh, anyway, so um, because we're level 60 cap on the server, um, and this area is like level 95 or whatever, um, so it always comes up with the, you are in a restricted area, we'll be removed, and then it you know, lets you actually get on with it. Okay, so, um, oh no, you're starting to get worried, you can't find it. I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sure you'll find it. It's got to be there somewhere. Okay. Um, that's true. I mean, if somehow you trashed it, I can't imagine you would have trashed it, but if you somehow trashed it, you could always do slash reclaim. Um, you could try that command. Oh, I was going to do the festival command. Can you do the festival command when you have a second, please? Okay. So, um, oh, awesome. Thanks, Mubat. Um, so spring festival time, as you may have figured out. And Fibro Jedi's guide is out there and is all the way up to date. Um, and he's got a really great guide, kind of helps take you through all the different areas and all the different things you can do. It's really good. Um, and then also we did an in-league and ale association delivery using a hunter to get us around. It took about 25 minutes. Oh, you deleted the character. Yeah, try reclaim. Try reclaim if you don't find it for sure. Oh my gosh, yes, that would like, uh, that'd be heart stopping. Um, so yes, yeah, so the link is actually there twice now um, because our link is in the festival now. Oh, uh -huh. Yeah, Eldeleth included that, which is so nice of her. Um, so the Ale Association and Delivery in League um, guide is a video and it takes you through it, but there's also a blog post if you'd rather read rather than, um, than watch. Okay, so we're gonna do Bee's Big Business and this is the first time I've done it today. So I have the main quest, which you get for coming in. And that's where um, he says, oh, my click, um, where Grimbjorn says, well, here we are. Why did I agree to lend my bees and aid Gondor with pollinating the fields of Losarnach? Well, my trusted hobbit, Gondor has conquered many foes that might one day threaten the safety of my veil. It is the least I could do. I assume you see me. Okay, cool. Um, he says, yes, I have called upon you to accompany me because I know not the lands of Los Arach. Um, how do I guide my bees upon lands that I do not know? You, however, know these lands. <laughs> this is why you shall guide my bees for me. Sure. Do not worry. All you have to do is make sure that they, uh, my bees do not stray far afield and that no harm comes to them. That should be quite easy. This is just a woods field with flowers after all. Uh, yeah, a few other things, but it's cool. Um... Are you guys, can I see? Oh, hey, there you go. There's Affidil in the boat. Hi, Affidil in the boat. Sweet. Where's, wait, I see you in the boat. 
Where's Where Willow? In the weeds. Oh, she's in the weeds. <laughs> being being watched by a bear. <laughs> um, okay, and then because we haven't run this yet today, uh, so okay, so the bees are ready to go, and so as soon as we click on a bee, they're going to take off. So we won't do that yet. Um, there's also two optional quests that you can pick up from Grimbjorn, uh, and these are daily. So there's the beautiful bouquet, and he says, My wife, Goethe, would like me to return to the Bjorning house with some Lofsenark's finest flowers. If you would pick some for me and give the flowers to my dogs, I will give you an extra reward. What do you say? Okay, so we are going to collect some flowers for her, or for him to give to her. And then also bees big business daily quest. He says, hmm, if you bring back, if you bring all my bees back to me well fed, I will give you an extra reward. What do you say? I say yes. That sounds great. Okay, so now we have picked up all three of the quests that we can do while we're in here. Um, all right, so now we can talk to a bee, and the bee says, "Buzz, buzz." <laughs> so the bee's objective is to pollinate the first field of flowers and uh, the, the bees must finish their task. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit continue. The bees seem eager to pollinate and not far away. It's so funny, the, bee, the first bee you talk to is the last one to leave. I don't know, maybe they're distracted by your, your human speak. Ah, okay, so now when you first come out, there are some flowers nearby. Um, now what we're end up, gonna end up doing is making a loop. A group of goats has eaten all the flowers here. What? Oh no, not goats. Totes but goats. Uh, yeah, I hope you find that toolkit. <laughs> Man, I can't imagine that would be like, no. I don't delete characters though. So I, um, I think, have I ever deleted one yet? thought about it really hard one time, but I don't know if I actually did. Because that whole restarting thing, people were getting into that, and I was like, well, maybe I'll try that. So anyway, we're going to make a loop. And so basically, we're going to go out and about and come back around and end up basically back where we started. Um, so those flowers I was picking, I could have waited to catch a little few of them later. Anyway, there was some interaction with goats here. <gasps> we have an encounter. A pesky pest lingers nearby. More goats. They are trying to eat all of the flowers. I'm a little behind here. But there's flowers to pick. <laughs> and for some reason, the flower picking doesn't show up. So there it says it comes up on my screen. So 7 out of 20. Uh, but for some reason, it doesn't like show up on the sidebar there with the, you know, the information of what quests you're currently working on. I don't know why. So, all right, so the bees have finished, and, or they're working on, and so you'll see the banner is um, sparkly there. But we don't have to do the banner right away because if we go past the banner, kind of towards the, that flower, you'll see there is a worrying wasp, and we have its attention. Uh, so this is our instance, and there are two instances here. Oh, encounter complete. You have stopped the pest from interfering. Yay, that was a big wasp too. Like, they grow things giant out here. Big. Really big bees. <laughs> uh, okay, so have I gotten all the flowers I see? I don't see any more flowers. But look at that. We're right by the water. Isn't that pretty? I do like how they've sent us out here into some really nice area. Okay, so the bees are chilling out by the banner here. And I think we've picked all the flowers that are nearby. So, yeah, so when we click on the banner, as I think, oh no, I will do it, okay. The bees will then pop up with their rings and they're ready to go. So again, they have the ring over their head. And so when you click on it, he says buzz. So they either say buzz, 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 or is there a third thing they say? Let's see, that one says buzz. What does this one say? This one says buzz. What does that one say? This one just says buzz also. Okay. Yeah, sometimes it's buzz buzz. You know. Oh, hey, there's a flower. Going for the flower. Oh no, passy goats. The goats will eat all the flowers of in Lassenark if left unchecked. All right, well, we better stop them goats. Oh, hey, I'm still in endurance stance. We've been doing a lot of red made, and um, I think we'll do tier one and tier two for you on stream here, but we might not do tier three. 
because I'm already getting enough stuttering. I mean, I'm getting pauses often enough that I, I feel like I would not be, I would be possibly a handicap, not a helper. <laughs> um, hello, infected pie. You got to play some Lotro this weekend. Work has kept you away too long. Ah, well, poor, poor you missing out. We are on spring, um, spring festival right now, and we are doing one of the uh, festival instances. Now there are um, uh, side <coughs> encounters, but and if you do all six of them, there's six different potential encounters that you can have uh, in, in between those two spaces. And we have come through often enough that we've managed to get all six of them completed. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> oh, hey, I'm following a goat. No. <laughs> oh, hey, there's a flower. Hmm? Oh, uh, Apodil is wearing the title wear beignet. Honey lover, there you go. If you get all six of them, all six of the encounters in here, um, then yes, Honey Lover is the title you get. It's pretty funny. So we did get that already. And I, I used that on one of my characters last year for a while. Oh, goats, my goats. Got more goats. Gotta get the goats. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 she just like whap, 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 when everything's done. <laughs> That's so good. The only thing you have to be careful about is not trying to like making sure you don't pull aggro by mistake. So the bees are little eyes on your on your mini radar, which is cute. Um, if you lose track of them, it can be a little um, like you can kind of feel like you get a little lost out here. Um, it was not clear to me the first couple times where to find everything. Oh, so here we are at this festival banner. And this is banner number two? This is number two. So before you click that banner, you want to kind of run up and look over the, over the hill here because this is where you'll find another encounter. So we got a Neeker Breaker. Man, did he see me that? Oh, wow, I didn't think I was close enough for him to see me. Look at how huge that Nika Breaker is. What in the world? Crazy Nika Breaker. All right, we have thwarted the dangerous distraction. Yay. So now we can go back to the bees and click on their banner. Let them know we're done. All right, he says buzz. Now it's funny because it says, um, Grimbor's bees must finish their task and at least one of the great lilies must survive. Um, the bees have a crap ton of health here. They've got 1,071,900 morale. Uh, yeah, against my 11,000. So I don't, I don't worry too much about the bees. Like there's been times when I've been off picking flowers and the bees are just sitting there taking hits from the goats and like nothing bad happens. <laughs> so it is similar to the summer festival where um, if you're doing the picnic one and you're trying to follow Penny the horse and she's like getting attacked by the by the heat and stuff like that she also has like a million morale points like she's fine <laughs> it's really quite funny oh did I get all my flowers I must have I don't see Okay, I can look at my quest log, see if it's there. Um, Spring Festival, beautiful bouquet. Give Rose some flowers, give Star some flowers, give Bud some flowers, give Sprout some flowers. I have 20 flowers. There we go. Awesome. Very cool. Okay, so sorry, I had my screen in the way there, but um, so coming down this hill here is uh, a couple waves of goats. I think we have four waves total that come down here. And then also though, at the same time, so the bees are back here pollinating these two giant lilies, um, but goats come wandering in from off to the side too. So when you have somebody who's really good at getting attention, like a minstrel or a Bjorning, um, they can gather them up, which is great. 
so many goats. <laughs> it's so cute, the little things they put on, on the screen for this one. Seems like they had some fun with this, uh, with this instance. All right, so they're gathering goats. And then we can use a little area attacks. Sweet. And see the bees are doing their thing over the great lilies. What's this? The great goat, the king of all goats, approaches, and he looks very hungry. But I also look like a hobbit that can stand in his way. Oh, oh okay, the Bjorning is doing it. <laughs> it's like one of those things where, you know, somebody's like, yeah, I did all that stuff, and there's the giant thing behind there going, yeah, I got it. You managed to delete it. Oh, that's sad. I hope the reclaim button works. If uh, if that does not work, I would definitely suggest putting in a ticket to customer service um, and have them see if they can help you out. Okay, so the bees finished pollinating. We got rid of the goats. They're ready to return to Grimbjorn. So we go ahead and click there, buzz, buzz. See, we got a double buzz. So we're supposed to escort them back, um, but they kind of know where to go. So where we came in was buying those tall reeds over there and the first encounter with the goats was there and that's where we went up and then we came around and we came down this other side. So, um, like I said, it just makes a nice little loop. Now there's a really awesome map for the spring festival or for the summer festival. Um, and so we are putting together a map of a similar form for this uh, to kind of help people as they're wandering around. Okay, so we have completed bees big business daily there is this floral basket here in front of the dogs so we click on that and that gives us our festivity tokens and those are tokens you can only get in festival instances so that's another reason why you might want to come in and run this and then we're going to give some flowers to the, the first dog wolf and to star what does star say star says rough bud says yip and sprout says woof woof and when we finish the last one that gives us six or seven uh spring leaves oh reclaim didn't work so yeah a ticket yeah yeah well hopefully that's uh, a success for you okay he says what took you so long did you stop and smell each and every flower <laughs> just some bjorning humor my friend i'm glad you've returned my bees to me he turns to his bees. Bees, did you have a grand meal? I am sure you did. All right. And so this will be the um, last one. So we've already turned in, we, uh, I think just by running over here, that turned in one of them. And then doing the basket, that did the second one. And then this completes the, um, the actual instance one. So we travel now. And we are boom, done with that. Now we're done with that on the uh, three person level. We can still run it as a one person and as a six person. Um, what does two person uh, overlap? Two, three, six. So two and three is the same. Okay. So you can run that as many as three times and get the festivity tokens um, three times. You run it at one each different level, but you'll notice there was four levels. Um, so solo is one level. Um, small fellowship is two person or three person. So we just did it at the small fellowship as a three person, but we could have done small fellowship as a two person. So that, um, was that chest as it were. So if we go to, if I go to my raid locks, it says floral basket, but it doesn't tell me which size, unfortunately, I wish it did, but it doesn't. Um, but the floral basket for small fellowship for me is now locked, uh, for today. But I could do a large fellowship, which is the six person, or I could do a solo, which is the one person, um, and still get festivity tokens for that. So why do I even care about festivity tokens, you say? Well, let me show you. Uh, Verbena, green hand. <laughs> Sorry, talk about Bjornings. <laughs> um, Verbena, green hand, is the uh, festivity token vendor, and she's here for spring. And you'll find her at the party tree in the summer and I think the fall. And in the winter, you'll find her for Yule Fest, you'll find her in um, Frostbluff. 
So, all right, so here she is for spring. And so this, so the selection of things that she has matches that festival. Um, so she has, um, <laughs> Kina Hens says, I got the Gundabad toolkit. It seems like it's the same as Fateful. I think you said something about that earlier. They're not identical. Um, if you got the middle package, that's the Gundabad toolkit. If you got the ultimate fan bundle, that one came with both a Gundabad and a Fateful. So did you get the ultimate fan edition or did you get the collector's edition? I think those are the right names. <laughs> yeah, I just, I mean, if it was me, I'd name them one, two, and three or something like that, or good, better, best, like, <laughs> you know, make it a little more obvious, but I guess ultimate, makes it more clear than collectors kind of yeah okay if you got ultimate then yeah you you would have had a fateful toolkit somewhere somewhere it came to you okay so in this festival there's a handful of cosmetics cosmetic outfit items uh the vines let's see is it not showing up under my thing let me see if i can get up the whole outfit up it's basically the outfit that the red maid is wearing. So you've got her dress, her shawl. Oh yeah, the, and the crown. Okay, there we go. So the crown is the headpiece there. And then the vines are the arm sleeves here, which is so wild. Um, it replaces, I think, the, um, the glove slot maybe. Uh, let me see if it says, oops, I just lost my mouse. There it is. Um, bum, 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 bum. yeah, it replaces the glove slot. Um, the shawl is your shoulder slot. And then the dress is, of course, that thing. I think the dress looks a little weird on a hobbit. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I do like it with other stuff. So let me reset. Let's see if I do the dress with these shoulders. No, nope. let me reset that. But I think the shawl, so the shoulder things, look kind of cool like there's some really cool outfits i have put together with that with those shawl things and the crown thing is wacky um anyway so you can get that from verbena um those items you could also get as a drop in the red made instance from time to time um let's see and then there's the honeycomb cloak which is cute look at that it's a honey pot in the center there with a the little stick and then it looks like dripping honey um, on different parts of it. So there's the regular version and then there's the hooded version if you also like to have honey on top of your head. <laughs> Sounds like a very sticky situation to me. <laughs> but it's a cute cloak. If you're a hooded cloak kind of person, um, you do have the hooded cloak option. So, uh, so those are the cosmetics you can get. Then there's also a mount. You can get the honey goat, which I do have. Um, well, here, I'll just, I'll just get on it. Get up on it. Hang on, let's see, where did I put my honey goat? I think I put her over here. Yeah, okay, so let's get on the honey goat because it's very cute. Um, since you bought both the collector, since you bought the collectors first, then the ultimate, you should have two Gundabad and one Fateful. That is my understanding because you got a Gundabad one with your collectors and then you got a second Gundabad and a Fateful with the Ultimate. So do you play on more than one server? Yeah, that's a, a good point then, is maybe you didn't get your bundle. Um, yeah. I, Weir Willow is pointing out that if you play on a legendary server, the second Gundabad toolkit and the... Um, uh, and the Fateful Toolkit would have been bundled with your Valar and they wouldn't have delivered that to a legendary world. They weren't delivering Valars to the legendary world. So it's possible it's just sitting in a queue. But okay, Keenan said he got the bundle but not, not the rest of those items. Interesting. The plot thickens like a pot of honey. <laughs> anyway, speaking of, this is my cute little goat. Oops, let me run backwards a little bit. So there's my honey goat. 
Oh, nice. So if you look at the Bees Big Business, back to Bees Big Business for a second, if you go to the wiki page, there's now a map on how to get around in um, La Sonarc with the Big Bees Big Business. So for each character, you got the Ultimate Fan Pack after you bought it, so either you didn't get it or deleted it, which I think is really weird if you did. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Because, I mean... It should be on one of your characters, I would hope. Or did you stick it in shared storage? Or did you stick it in somebody in a character storage by any chance? Hey, the Lotro freebie for the week, by the way, is a green die. Um, the code is greenery, as it says there, as Moobot has said. Thank you, Moobot. Um, that code will change later on today. It swaps over on Thursdays. So if you want to get in on that, you'll probably want to do that. Before, well, you want to do that before the end of the day for sure. So this is the honey goat and you can see I've got, it's got those kind of dripping honey looks on the saddle as well. And also in the front, in his little front tabard there with the, <laughs> with the honey pot. Oh, and on his nose, that's cute. On this side, we've got three um, pots full of honey. On the back, we have a giant um, jar for honey. And then on this side, I love this little detail. Um, there's this like satchel with flowers on it that were probably, you know, pollinated flowers. Um, so that's really super cute. I like that one a lot. However, for, since we've been running around in Moria, I didn't have the honey goat yet. And I did have though this goat of Arid Mithrin with its blues and silvers. And so I coordinated my outfit with that. So I'm not changing my goat to the honey goat at this point because, you know, I already coordinated and it's, you know, <laughs> it's how these things go. Now, Aphidil has coordinated for riding around one of the um, spring festival mounts. Um, which one is that? The um, Steed of the Forest Spring. Oh, my currency's capped. I probably should spend some then with Rubina. Um, that's the Steed of the Four Springs. So hang on, I just realized that, so with the only problem with festivity tokens is you have a wallet limit of 40. You have a cap limit of 40. So I gotta figure out what I'm gonna spend mine on because I, I'm still waiting for the drops in <laughs> from the other thing. Maybe I should just go ahead and buy the outfits. What? Hmm? Buy what? The dress and stuff? Let me look at my wardrobe. I've got two of the Naruhel items so far. Um, that Because they drop and they're fellowship tradable. So we swap them around real quick. Oops, helps if I spell her name right. <gasps> you found it! Yay! Yay! Oh, I'm so glad you found it though. Like, hey, you know what? If we hadn't been doing this stream and you hadn't been asking questions, we wouldn't have inspired you to go looking for it and it would have sat there in that pack until who knows when. So now you're gonna have bonus spring festival tokens. So no need to be embarrassed. I'm just so glad you found it and that you have it now. So yay. <laughs> you are most welcome for the help. I'm so glad that we were able to get you there. <laughs> Um, okay, so I was going to check here. What do I have or not have? Um, I have the crown. I have the vines. I have the dress. The thing I don't have is the shawl, which is really funny because that's kind of my favorite. All right, fine. I have bought the shawl. Yeah, these tokens in this festival are kind of easy for us to get because we run Bees Big Business pretty often. Um, oh, I just closed my wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> I should have left that open because I want to drag that in there. Yeah, and see, the problem about the, the, the shawl and the dress and the vines and all that is that it is um, bound to account. If you get it as a drop in the instance, it's fellowship tradable, which is nice um, for like an hour, you know, but then after that, um, then after that, it's, uh, it's, I think it's bound to account just like this one is. Okay, so now I've used it. I put it in my wardrobe. I'm throwing it away. I have started doing that. I try. I don't throw much away. 
Um, and I don't delete characters. <laughs> I'm just, I'm always nervous. I don't know. I can't, like, a character's a somebody. Like, I can't, I can't delete a character. I just, I just can't do it. <laughs> it's so hard. Okay. So anyway, so, oh, yeah. So Verbena has also, um, has really cute Lossenark lilies. Um, so that, that big lily that we saw the, the bees um, pollinating, that's the great lily. And you can buy that from her. Um, that one costs you 15 festivity tokens. And, but the other one, the one that just says lily, it's small. It's much, much smaller. So just be prepared. It's, it's, uh, if you're looking for a small and delicate item, that would be the one. If you're looking for the big, chunky thing, you want the great lily. Um, and then they have banners. If you're a person who likes to put banners in your yard, um, they have, but then they have these Gammer's furniture. So Gammer's best hall bench, Gammer's best armchair, Gammer's tea table. It's some really cute stuff. It's very much, it's absolutely um, Hobbit style, you know, as you might guess. Um, so there's a whole series of that here. I like the Gammer's couch for tall visitors. <laughs> so yes, you can get a tall couch. Um, so it's really cute. It's a really cute set of furniture that you can get. And then um, Sergeant Tom over here, sorry, I'm crazy goat driver. Um, he also has, let's see, housing items. Yeah, so he has like Gammer's cozy hobbit bed, Gammer's coffee table, Gammer's tall trinket stand. So you could get a handful of Gammer's stuff from him also, but the majority of it is over with Verbena. <clears throat> so if you're looking for any of that sort of stuff, that's that's where you find it. Also, the mounts. So I showed you the honey goat. Um, if you come to Tom and then you go down to, should be Spring Festival Steeds, you can get the Steed of the Forest Spring. Oh, I haven't gotten that yet. Well, let's get that out of the way. And then the Elk of the Spring Wood. I love the elk. The elk is so pretty. <clears throat> so those are the two steeds that are available. So this um, spring festival this year is kind of like a um, an encore of last year's spring festival. They didn't get a chance to do a second, you know, some, because they used to do that, right? They used to do like, you'd have the festival in, you know, March, March into April, excuse me. And then it would be like <clears throat> end of July and they would do a bonus like one or two weeks of the festival, uh, a little encore. So you could finish off if there were things that you didn't finish off in the first round. Um, they didn't do any encores last year or possibly even the year before that, I think. So they kind of ended up doing the um, the fall festival, the harvest, yeah, harvest math, and now spring festival have been kind of encores of the one that it was before, the year before. So it's the same two steeds that were available last year. If you hadn't, um, if you'd already gotten them, you don't need to worry about it, you already have them. But this is Treebeard. Treebeard didn't exist last year, so I'm very happy to, uh, to have the opportunity to get these. Okay, so I wanna put the elk, oops. I wanna put the elk of the Springwood on my bar because I want to show you what it looks like. It's a little scary. <laughs> He's got these haunting eyes. But, all right, so let's get on the Elk of the Springwood. It's very pretty though. Check that out. Look at that outfit. I like that one. And these again got the, the dark fur, like the, uh, um, like the goat does. Oh, here, let me move this out of the way. That's not the word, that's not the button. This is the button, there we go. So, but yeah, you can see, so you can see how our mounts, oops, wrong way, let me move over closer to you. You can see how the mounts have a have that, you know, green style going on. But that, the, the one that Aphidil is on has kind of like some brighter greens and golds. Um, and this one has some kind of darker greens and golds and some white. Um, but the, look at those eyes. I mean, I know it's just like the covering over his face and then you can really see his eyes and you get it in kind of closer, but, um, further away, it looks like they're just like sockets, like eyes to his soul. He can see within you. <laughs> so there we go. And Odin oh, has got some nice, uh, we've got leaves intertwined 
on her horns. Oh my gosh. I do like the, the leaf on the bridle there. That's kind of that's kind of pretty. So anyway, so those are the uh, the different steeds, sorry there, um, that you could get during this festival. All right, got to get back on the one that matches though. It's just a thing, you know. Okay. Oh, we're gonna do. Okay, so remember how I was talking about? Oh, did you get six of us? No, we're just gonna do it with three. Okay. Mm hmm. Yeah, tier one. Okay, so remember I was talking about the um, boss from the vaults, and this is the Red Maid. So if you have gone through the Lone Lands and you've gotten to over the, the Oskaruth side of things, um, you end up at one point going to uh, help out with there's the Red Maid and she's been corrupted, um, and you know she's corrupting this whole area of, of, of um, I wonder if, yeah, of the, Lone lands up in Agawar, Ag Agamar, Agamar, Agamar. Been talking about vowel sounds today. Anyway, uh, she's up there. She's been causing problems. And so when you get close to her, there's a room out there, and uh, like one of her lieutenants tries to stop you. And then once you get past him, there's a chest, and you pick up something out of the chest, and it throws you up into the air, and then you've got to carry that out to her like to her altar and that's what begins the battle so this is basically that um it just kind of streamlines that whole thing so she, we're here as soon as we get through this um doorway here maybe this is the room where you encounter the lieutenant guy anyway so when we get through that um that doorway up ahead doors are going to close behind us and we will encounter her and then every so often when her health gets to certain points, the, um, she's got minions on the side and they will start walking uh, one from each side to that center altar and try and sacrifice themselves. And if they manage to do so, then she gains in strength or her health resets or, you know, like various things happen. Um, so tier one, that's what's going to happen. This is a six person instance and uh, we are currently in here with three, but the tier one is pretty easy um so we can we're gonna give it a go we're gonna give it a try okay eat some beauty cake oh hang on a second okay i wanted to eat some beauty cakes too all right so i've done all my foods So yes, uh, Kina Hans, make sure you keep track of that from now on. <laughs> okay, so there she is. And she she does some uh, talking at first. And then you can attack her when she turns red. So now instead of that chest throwing you up in the air, she throws you up in the air. All right, and it's great sometimes you get falling damage it's hilarious so now she says my strength weakens surround me nature and defend me from attackers so now we've got these disciples that are trying to sacrifice themselves on her behalf so if we can stop them and it looks like we did good job so you'll notice our bjorning has like a purple eye over her head um that means that she was targeted for a moment and she was dropping these uh, red boxes that you see on the ground. Oh, see, I have one. So I will be dropping, there we go. Oh, I can't move. I got hands grabbing me as well. Um, so that's less awesome for me, but that's okay. Um, so I dropped a, they're still grabbing me little turkeys. Oh man, I'm gonna drop a second box where I'm standing. That's, there we go, now I can move. Um, so you end up dropping one of these boxes. Wow, she's really got these things grabbing me. That's wild. Okay, so while I'm standing in that box, it's doing damage to me. Um, oh, now Apodil's got it. You see how she dropped a box? Tier one, you drop one. Tier two, you drop two. Oh, maybe you got hit again. Yeah, I think, we're pretty sure you drop one in tier one, you drop two in tier two, and you drop three in tier three. So like if I were to stand in this, you'll notice right there, I have an effect on me, boiling blood. Uh, subtracts 10% of your maximum morale every five seconds. 
So, you know, that's less than ideal. And I think it gets worse in the higher levels. Yay, but we finished her off. So that's tier one. Tier one's not bad. And <laughs> they're still down here doing this effect on me. But now she's been cleansed and she's waking up. And there's a silver chest over there. And in it, you will find festivity tokens. Now, the barter tokens, the festivity tokens, do not count for uh, the fateful toolkit. You don't get bonus that. So you still only get five festivity tokens, but any um, spring leaves you get, you do get extras. Hey, that was nice. That's the little petals over me there. <laughs> That's also a spring festival thing. My sisters are far from me. I cannot hear their songs or fear their, feel their gentle breath among the trees. Barren are those trees, nearly lifeless, choked out by the roots, bloated with something that has a blister taste of iron. Oh, sorry, a bitter taste of iron. Where are you, my sisters, and what is before me? I cannot see beyond the red of this land, but I sense something sweet among the bitter ferns and swollen roots. Are you real? Am I supposed? Am I still imprisoned in the land? She says, there is life in you. I feel this. There must be life elsewhere in these lands. Perhaps I can find this life anew and nurture it back to health. So there we go. And we get some legendary item experience, so that's nice. And three more spring leaves. Well, probably it was supposed to be two, so we got three. Now, there's no exit exit here, I don't think, so we just portrait exit out. But it also counts as a spring festival activity. So I'm up to four spring festival activities for today already, just doing the instances and that um, delivering wines thing, which was cool. Um, Excuse me. The delivering wines gives you also that um, bonus virtue experience. So that's pretty cool. I like to do that one every day because, I mean, I'm already going to do 10 festival activities. I might as well do one that gives me some... Best, that gives me uh, virtue XP as well. That is convenient. All right. Oh. <laughs> One of our kiddies came online, said good evening, and went offline. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let's see. And what did I get? I got a major essence of mind. Okay. Well, I will pass that over to Afdil at some point. Afdil holds all of our uh, all of our essences. Um, we got a, a essence um, carry all. Um, Apidil has one, so I'll just pass everything over. All right. So that was our tier one. I mean, we could try tier two, but I think we would probably want maybe other pupils. <laughs> It'll be fine. <laughs> oh, we can try it. So tier two. Um, I wasn't, I wasn't, I didn't have myself on self heal, so that's true. Um, tier two is a little tougher. Um, she's, she's harder. I don't know if she has more health. I haven't actually looked at that. Um, but so then she's got those, um, people that sacrifice themselves and they, you know, they go in waves as she, her health goes down. And then also there are, um, red spirits that come in and they're a little strong. <laughs> Excuse me. I see you uh, two are shopping. <laughs> my uh, the fellowship thing is telling me that uh, you know uh, my fellowship people have acquired Gammer's best armchair, Gammer's catch for tall visitors, Gammer's best large footstool. <laughs> I have Gammer's best couch. I think um, I'm gonna put that. Yeah, one of our. One of our kiddies' uh, rooms in his house. Okay, so, uh, tier two. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, so they're going to hit harder. Uh, they're harder to kill. You know, we got the red uh, spirits. They are nasty in tier three. I can't remember how bad they are in tier two. Mm, let's see, what am I missing here? Cooked food, so I'm missing Bjorning's food. Let's have some Bjorning's food. Bjorning honey cakes. It's um, power regen and morale regen. Very worth it. Um, and then I also have my 
um, superior rack of lamb with mint sauce, giving me also combat and power, uh, in combat and out of combat, power and morale regen. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, we've got the lamb and carrot soup, which is giving me some resistance rating and wound resistance. And then we've got the superior cup of red tea, which gives me plus 90 vitality. So that's extra health. Um, and the cool thing is they all stack because they're different kinds of foods. And even though the Bjornings seems like it's kind of a cooked food, it shares the same cooldown. So like if you eat one, you have to wait for the other one. Um, <laughs> uh, you can eat them both and they stack. That's so funny. Aphidil says, I put a sun over her head, so we forget who we're after. It's her. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> it's so good you do that. Otherwise, I totally would have forgotten who was, uh, who was the boss here. <laughs> oh, that's funny. I'm going to zoom my eyes out a little bit here. Yeah, she either has more mitigations or she has more health. I'm not sure. 620, I think she has more health. Okay, and so now the um, her helpers, here they come. So one comes from each side, so you can't just like grab them both until they get to the middle here. And then you can hit them both at the same time. Oh, I'm dropping. Oh, we're just gonna have to deal with that in a minute because I want to try and finish them off. Oh, she becomes more difficult to harm. We did not manage to uh, take them both out. She also has that effect, that water cyclone. Sometimes you'll see that come up, and that is nasty. I can do a lot of damage. Here's an unstable greater ritual blood water. He got all sorts of names in his title. And they do a lot of damage. So if you're doing this instance, you want to make sure that whoever is your tank is able to get those blood waters attention because uh for example it could come over here and hit me and it might one shot me i know in tier three they do they absolutely do yeah oh, i'm dropping puddles again i'm gonna run over here and try and get it out of the way okay oh there's her water cyclone again Water cyclone does a bunch of damage, so when you see that come up, you want to interrupt it if you can. It's a minstrel killer, yeah. So I, uh, I try to use my interrupt on that when I see it come up. It's a minstrel killer, indeed. Right. Oh, water cyclone, awesome. So I got it, I think. She should be getting close. Yeah, water cyclone, bad. So you'll notice though that um, our, our bear is having to deal with a whole bunch of those boxes over there too. Um, although she might be in a spot between them. No, I think she might be in one. So because the, uh, no, now I've got it. Let me try and drop them over here away from everybody else. There we go. Um, the, um, the blood waters dropped them too, is my understanding. So that makes it a little tougher to... Oh, I'm dropping the puddles again. So one of the things we tried to do is we thought, well, what if we just put them both in the same spot? So that way there's fewer areas. This is in tier three. But that way there's fewer places to have to run around, you know, to, to, to avoid. There we go. I went ahead and switched over to endurance stance. So I can just use quick shot as a hunter and get health back real fast. All right, the Kreoths are live. So what that means basically is if we don't take them both down, which I don't think we will because we, we just don't have enough DPS, um, is that uh, all the work we have done on Naruel so far will just be undone. Oh, here's an unstable ritual blood water. So this is, not exactly what tier three is like, but it kind of feels like this sometimes in the sense of, uh, wee. Um, with six people, it's like this, but with, you know, like kind of what we're doing with three.
Knowingly, we still have one more round of the, uh, the Kriots. Oh, and there's usually two uh, blood waters. That's what it is. In tier two, we're only getting one. But there's off in, uh, in tier three, you get two of them each round. Okay, so she's doing that, which means these guys are coming, and I'll do my best, but, uh, oh, yeah. She's also attacking me. <laughs> so that's what it looks like doing a six-person instance with three people. <laughs> At level. Because this in this, uh, oh, I guess this might have been level 50. Although you might have run it at level 60. <laughs> I wonder if I can walk out this door. We cannot use that, but I want to. Oh, how funny, there's water. Like when you jump up, there's water on the floor. Is there water everywhere? Oh, yeah, there's water here. What about here? Huh. I didn't realize this whole place was covered with water. <laughs> well, now I'm kind of curious. Yeah, there's water. Oh, hey, we could go do shoe stomping. Yeah, I never noticed all this water. I mean, of course, in the, in the swamp, sure. Eh. And we're all just like checking for water now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I think I'm gonna stomp some shrews. So I'm gonna send myself to Duland. There we are. Ah, All right, so an hour in and we have done both of the instances at least once. So if that was something you were curious to see what that looked like, um, now you have at least a better um, idea of what to, what you might see if you go into those. So it's not maybe so uh, so big of an unknown. So one of the things I wanted to do here is I wanted to show you the stuff that's happening out here in Erdluin with excuse me with the elves. So okay, so here we are in Dulin, and I'm going to mount up. Okay, cool. So over here is a cave, and this is the time of year when it is active. So let's get ourselves in here. And you know what's kind of cool is I didn't realize, but it is open air in here. It looks like a cave cave, but it's actually open air. Check that out. It's so cool. Okay. Anyway, so I'm going to wander over here, and I'm going to talk to this gardener. Mind my words, and hopefully I'm not shooting myself in the foot here. Grab some boots. Um, okay, so the person was basically, well, I'm kind of zooming through here. Hang on a second, because I do. I'll talk my way through here a little bit more in a second. So anyway, this guy wants me to get the giant shrew, and he has a different set of shoes for me to use, which is annoying because, like, the same shoes would have been more handy. But okay, there we go. And now I'm in the um, garden, so I can stomp some shrews. Is that still the encounter? We're going to get rid of that. Okay, so when we came in, there were a bunch of people with rings over their head. And we're not going to leave this garden area. But um, specifically, there's three people over here that are gardeners. So there's the leisurely gardener, there's the practiced gardener, and the elite gardener. So when you first come in here and you haven't done anything, um, the leisurely gardener will, um, you know, kind of give you the sob story that the shrews are in here and they're eating all these beautiful flowers in this beautiful garden that they've been working on. These are elves, um, in case you didn't catch on to that part of it. Um, so, you know, everything is about aesthetics and, you know, and, and life and growth and the seasons and all that, right? So, so they want to um, protect this garden, but the shrews, and the shrews are eating it and they're annoyed. So she says, hey, can you go in there and like boot oh, 10 shrews for me? Um, and we have these shoes, these special shrew shoes that um, these, I have the boots of quite imaginable power. And uh, they, 
they, they don't hurt the shrews, they just shoo them away, is, is my understanding. So, uh, and that's why we have these special boots. Okay, so I am going to run around and boot some shrews, for example. So, I'm gonna go and kick a shrew, go and kick a shrew. Okay, um, you'll notice though, these piles of soil are also flickering for me and possibly for other, a few other people as well. So I have been also tasked by a different gardener, not that first gardener, because we didn't talk to her, we talked to the third one. Um, the third gardener wants you to boot shrews and plant special seedlings in the soil while you're in here, and you have a limited amount of time to do it. So basically that's kind of the progression. The first gardener says, hey, go boot some shrews for me. So you do that, you're good to go. She sends you on your way. She gives you one spring leaf, I think. Um, the second one, he's like, hey, can you go boot some shrews? But you've got a limited amount of time to do this. Um, so you're like, okay, so you go and do that. And the third one is like, hey, can you go boot some shrews? But, and you have a limited amount of time. Also, can you plant some seedlings while you're in there? <laughs> so it's a progressively more difficult challenge but it's also um they give you more festival tokens for it oh really oh apparently when the shrews eat one of the special seedlings it turns the shrews rabid i didn't know that <laughs> makes you wonder what the elves are planting it's just catnip <laughs> <laughs> Who knew the shrews would find catnip so exciting? <laughs> Some of that special pipeweed. <laughs> you thought only hobbits knew about pipeweed. Okay, so there we go. Now I have booted nine shrews. I have done five piles, and I did it within the time period. So now um, the third gardener is ready for me. So I go over to her, and I turn this in. And she gives me a box and there's festival tokens inside the box. So, okay, so as I was saying from the garden, we have, maybe I can stand on this table. Awesome. So we have the leisurely gardener and she's the one that's like, hey, go boot 10 shrews for me. We're good, she gives you one. The practiced gardener is like, hey, can you go do 10, but you have a limited amount of time to do it in. And he gives you two, I'm pretty sure. And then the elite gardener you know, 10 shrews, you know, limited time, also plant five times while you're in there within that same period of time. But then she gives you a box and the box I'm pretty sure has five in it because with my bonus, I get six. Yep, yep, yep. So, so that's worth it. Okay, so what was the deal with that other guy who was like this giant shrew? So you may have noticed there was a giant shrew that popped up like halfway, two thirds of the way through that that little chaos that just happened. Um, if you are the first one to go and boot that shrew, um, he gives you a festival box and it will have tokens in it or sometimes a shrew, uh, the shrew pet that you might be looking for. Um, so interesting thing that happened the other day is Affidel and I are very competitive as, as I don't know if you, all of you know that, <laughs> with each other, especially. And so I was like, hey, I got the giant shrew. And Afidil was like, no, I got the giant shrew. I'm like, what? And we both went over and collected boxes from the guy. So we think, our theory is that if two people boot it, like at the same time, they both get credit for it. Um, I don't, we haven't verified that, but it was really interesting that that happened one time. And I don't think it was a fellowship thing because we've been in fellowships before where one of us gets the shrew and the other one doesn't, like that, that's normal. Um, so I think it was, we just happened to coincide and get it at the same time. So that's kind of cool. And we're gonna try and test that hopefully at other points throughout the festival. Um, it's a little busier right now. There's, there's multiple other people that are probably gonna be in the festival garden when it starts up again. 
But if there's any point where it's just the two of us in there, we'll probably coordinate, be like, okay, one, two, three, boot, you know, that kind of thing, um, just to see and just test it out. Okay, so now the shrew thing has completed. And so now we wait for the next one to start. So if you're ever in maybe all of Ered Luin, but definitely if you're in this area, um, you'll get that thing that pops up sometimes. It says, you know, the shrews are in the garden. Or let me see if I can find it. Um, where is it? You get, but you get that that notification that pops up kind of like you know the chickens have entered uh, are loose in the maze the chickens have escaped the maze like that those sorts of things the shrew one you'll see a shrew one sometimes interesting i wonder if i've somehow like blocked it yeah a, a game of shrew a game of stomp a shrew is about to begin in doolin um and that's what this is this is what it's talking about and so you'll have time to get in there uh because then you'll have the um there's a garden announcer, and she's over here, this townsperson, and she will announce, um, you know, one minute left, and then she will also announce 10 seconds before the game begins. Oh, and the rings are up. Okay. Yeah, a game of Stomp a Shrew is about to begin in Dooland. So again, these are our three people, so that's the Just Do 10, this guy is the do 10, but in a certain amount of time. And then this is the one where she's like, you know, you've got uh, 10, you do 10 and, and plant seeds. Now, I have to get the boots from this crate every single time. And the annoying thing is when you get the boots, then you have to drag them off of your inventory onto your bar every single time. But I found that there's, I don't know if this is working as intended or if this is a glitch, but basically notice how I have my inventory open. So I picked up the quest from the giant shrew guy. I'm getting the boots out of the box. The boots are going to show up in my inventory right here. Oh, sorry, I got to hit yes. All right, so the boots show up in my inventory right there. They're red because we're not in the middle of it yet. It hasn't started, so I can't use them yet. But they went ahead and populated the spot on my bar where I had them before. So now I can close my inventory and they're still there. So that is a trick. I don't know if it's a trick or if it's supposed to be like that, but it's really useful because I get really annoyed at dragging things onto my bar all the time. Um, so that if you find yourself in that same situation, uh, know that that is a thing you can do. So as long as you have the bar visible, so like if I was on my other, because um, this is my festival, in a moats bar and this is my, my combat bar. Um, so if I had like my combat bars op open and I did that, it wouldn't, it doesn't work, I'm pretty sure. I think, I'm pretty sure it has to be visible and then the, all the, um, uh, the inventory has to be visible for it to automatically fill in where I have had it before. <sighs> so yeah, um, so that's something to look out for if that's something that makes your life a little easier. Okay, we have other people in here, so I think we won't try to coordinate the giant shrew, but we will try and both get the giant shrew. Because <laughs> it's an additional, like, five festival tokens in that box if you don't get a shrew in the box. Um, and then plus one, so yes, just stomp the giant shrew as soon as it comes out, easy. So yeah, the funny thing is if you are near the giant shrew, um, it has a kickback effect. So it comes out and then it does a kickback um, thanks for the roots. <laughs> those are from the Wildwood, in case anybody's wondering where you can get those. Um, it's just a little effect you put out. It's got a whistle. Aphidel got a whistle. And, uh, yeah, so there's that. <laughs> it puts out those giant... They don't do anything. Like, they don't harm you or anything. The roots, they just chill out. All right, so there's a small cooldown, by the way, on this boot-kicking thing. So you can kick once, and then you got to wait a second for it to... Um, reset and the shrews don't stand still like they they stop eat a little bit and then they run to the next one and they eat a little bit and they run to the next one and they eat a little bit um, so that's true you can see where they're going because when you're targeted on them if you uh, you can see what they're targeting at least I can I don't I think my I mean, maybe an option that I've turned on there's there's 
things in your options that you can turn on. Um, that's one of them. You can put it in the chit chat honey, if you uh, are looking that up. It's like target forwarding or no, that's not it. There's an option to see what your target is seeing. Now these soil bun uh, piles that I'm putting seeds in, they don't um, disappear like when you put it in there for other people. So you can share. Um, there's no problem with um, um, putting seedlings down the same place as other people putting seedlings. Okay, so that is, so you'll notice my Stomp a Shrew challenge is done, but the Stomp a Shrew and Enormous Shrew is not. So that's why I'm sticking around in the garden. It's really funny because there'll be times when people finish the first one and then they run off and I'm like, Giant Shrew hasn't come out yet. Where are you going? Because <laughs> that one's totally worth it if you can catch it. I'll come stand kind of in the middle with these folks. Ish. Oh, there it is. You can kind of hear it. There's like a, a, a an audio sound that comes with it. You know, like something is, you know, crunching through a large paper cardboard box or something. All right. Somebody else got it that time. Wasn't me. That's okay. No, that's okay. All right, well done. A new game will begin shortly. Da -da -da. And I got my box, and my box contains six spring leaves. Da -da -da. Okay, so other things going on in here. There are three other people over here with rings over their heads. So we might go and do one of these in a minute. Actually, we can do we can do two of these. Let's start with the worried gardener. We haven't done this on screen this year. So we'll talk to her. So she's another elf. Oh, the sound precedes the giant shrew by a good second, and it's in stereo. So you can use it to pinpoint the shrew. That's funny. It's very important if you want to be a giant shrew stomper. <laughs> or just play in the mornings when everybody's asleep and, you know, or at work. <laughs> okay, so she has this quest, a shortage of boots. Um, actually, we might not. I don't know. I think I'm like not bothered with that. She's basically sends you into town here in Tadulin. You talk to a couple of elves. They've got some weird thing going on between them. And then um, they send you off to go get more stuff, some of which is in the area and some of which you have to go down to Kalendum to get. Um, I mean, Kalendum's not that far, I know, but I don't feel like it. Um, but we will do the annoyed gardener, another elf. So he is annoyed at this whole shrew stomping thing. He says, this shrew business is positively ruining the festival for me. I almost didn't come this year. <laughs> he says, this is such a violent game and it offends me terribly. Stomping on shrews is so far beneath the dignity of the free peoples that I refuse to participate, but I have come up with something better to do. I would like her to propose that we actually do something useful for the festival to try and salvage this catastrophe. Um, I saw some lovely flowers growing in the fields outside of Dulin. You should collect them and plant them in here. That is a proper festival activity for you. So sure, we'll go do that real quick. And this is nice because you can actually accomplish this kind of between um, the shrew stomping sessions. Now, sometimes I will do the um, gathering quest that the other elf has as well. Um, like if I'm, so a lot of times what I find myself is that I'm, I use the shrew stomping as a way to like, oops, do a few things in the game and then <clears throat> uh, go get some other things done, like get more tea or something. So I don't mind the downtime. But if you're trying to get through it a little faster, um, you could do their two quests and that's two more quests that you get done, you know, in the same amount of time that between doing the shoe stomping. Um, this one, if you're quick about it, you can actually accomplish between two sessions of shrew stomping. So you notice I'm just wandering around out here, um, not far from, like I'm right here in the same area. Like you can see that Aphidil's still inside the, the cave and I'm really close by. So how many more flowers do I need? I need two more flowers. Now, if you're a low level character, this may not be, you know, may not go as quickly for you. Um, <laughs> you may have to, you know, take your time with it. No, I don't want those. There we go. Spring flowers. Ta -da. 
So this will be spring flower number eight. And then you keep that thing up where you can see when that pops up saying, you know, a shrew the shrews have entered the garden or whatever. So that way you can get back in time to um, not miss out on the next round. So you see, I picked those eight flowers. Okay, it just came up saying a game of Stomp a Shrew is about to begin in Dooland. So I'm going to pop back into the cave, the open air cave. <laughs> I mean, seriously, look at that. Those waterfalls over there. Like, dang, this place is so pretty. It's really cool. I wish there were more things that happened in here over there. That'd be kind of cool. All right, so we're going to go back over here to our elite gardener. And I'm going to pick up the quest. I'm going to open my inventory so I can pick up the boots. Now, I haven't finished my thing for that annoyed gardener yet. He's still waiting on me. That's okay. And notice the flower pots next to me are glowing now. But, and that is totally fine. So, okay, I'm going to pick up my giant boots. Yep, yep. And head into the garden. So the cool thing is from inside here, you can actually reach these flower pots. I'm going to close my inventory. So there's the flower pot right there. And there's two by each little set of stairs. So I can just go around while I'm waiting and finish this quest. So again, you know, a way to use your time while you're waiting for one quest, do another quest kind of thing. So I find the shrew stomping is um, an effective use of my time, I guess, <laughs> if one could say that about playing a game. <laughs> but look at those little flowers that he's got us put in there. We have improved the festival garden five out of eight times so far. So look at these cute little yellow flowers. You know, we picked up some flower bulbs at the store the other day, and they might come out looking like that. I think they're a little bit rounder, the ones that we have. I don't think they look quite like that. Not too far. Some similar colors, I think. Ooh. Our bear friend just got a two pound salmon. Since we're still in a um, fellowship, I can see what she's, um, <laughs> what she, she's fishing. <laughs> All right, there's seven out of eight. And the announcer has said one minute till the game remains. Now, I'm not gonna go turn this in because not a hundred percent sure where the boundaries are for being inside the garden and i'd hate to like leave to go turn that in and they're like you've left the garden <laughs> your text thing is so funny oh about the lady with the food <laughs> but i tweet every time before i go um before i stream to kind of help remind help people remember in case they were like oh yeah i wanted to go check that out um so yes i I put on my tweet today that we were um, coming to do uh, festival instances and find out if that lady ever got those people out of her food. <laughs> yeah, I want to do play a game with my kinship of like name that festival NPC. <laughs> it tends to say funny things that you didn't say. <laughs> Are you reading between the lines of, of my tweets? You know, there's only so many characters you can put into a tweet. So I, uh, you know, I, I try to get the, the basics out there and uh, uh, try to say as much as I can with as few words as I can. <laughs> wow, that's a nice looking cloak on that guy. Hmm. It's interesting how things can look so different when you dye them. Oh, looks like I might have my five soils. I do. I have planted five times. Okay, let's go get some shrews. Hey, shrew, shrew, shrew. Oh, weird. Ah, so apparently the shrews, if they get rabid, sometimes they can attack you. Uh, the ones that eat the special seedlings, if they eat the special seedlings, they can become attack attacking shrews, which is really frustrating when you're trying to do like the gardening thing. Because they attack you and you're like, dude, I'm just planting seeds here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. You are going to get back up and bop them on the head. So I suppose there's that. Maybe it's like a, a pre, pre bopping. <gasps> he's there. He's there. He's there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, no. Come on. Come on. Yes. Maybe. I may have got it. I maybe didn't. I'm not sure. 
I ended up clicking on other things. Um, oh, I did, I think. Wait, no. Oh, another hero. That's too bad. I was right on top of it, too. That's so funny. Okay, so we'll turn this one in. Yes, thank you, Image. And we'll go talk to the annoyed gardener over here. Hello, my dude. What do you need? He says, that is much better. You and I understand what it truly means to visit a festival. Uh, there should be something lovely and beautiful to feast our eyes upon. No unconscious shrews or chewed up gardens. I'm glad we found something proper to do. So, and then he gives you three, uh, well, two, sorry, spring leaves, but three if you have the toolkit. Now, next to him is a hobbit that he's been chatting with, Bodo, Bodo Burrows. And Bodo has the, this quest called How the Shire Shrews, How the Shire Shoes Shrews. <laughs> shrews or shoes for one. Shrews, shrews, yeah. How the shrews, shrews, shrews. How the shoes, shrews, shrews. <laughs> so he says, well, I never thought I'd see the day when we hobbits would have these graceful old elves beat, but it seems this is just such a day. This will make a grand story at the ivy bush. As you can imagine, as you can imagine, we have many farms and gardens in the Shire, and naturally we have shrews to pester us as well. But I guarantee you that even the simplest hobbit has more wisdom in dealing with shrews than all these elves combined. Don't believe me? Go talk to the farmers around Hobbiton and Mickle Delving. See what happens when shrews dare to pester them. Then you can come back and tell these poor hapless elves what you have learned. So if you do this quest, um, you get two spring leaves at the end of it. So first of all, you pick it up from the Hobbit, and then the leisurely gardener gets a little bit in a snit, so you gotta go to her. And she says, he said, what? Why that little, nay, don't listen to me. There's no reason for me to take offense. Perhaps our little dirty foot, cheeky, gap tooth guest is correct. <laughs> she gets annoyed. Perhaps we elves have something to learn from these Hobbits. They must be truly gifted farmers who have grown so fat. Yes, do go to the Shire. Learn what you can from the dumplings, I mean halflings, on how to best get rid of shrews. So your objective is to go talk to uh, Nibs Cotton at Cotton Farm. That's in Bywater. Uh, speak to Wald Sanson at Sanson's Farm. And speak to the gaffer up in Hobbiton. So that is a daily that you can do, but they're not nearby. So I sometimes will pick it up and just kind of carry it around for a while. Now, this character is a hunter, so she can get around, you know, pretty easily. Uh, we're questing in Moria right now, and so my campsite fire is set to the Silvertine loads in there, which has been really handy. Um, so until we're done questing in Moria, I will probably leave my campfire there. But once we're done, um, I am likely to set my campfire to the hill because that is really useful for festival time. Uh, because, for example, I could pop over to the hill and talk to Farmer Maggot. Uh, no, it's not Farmer Maggot. Uh, talk to the gaffer and then travel south from there and over to um, Bywater and go see the cottons at Cotton Farm. So that would get two of those out of the way and then I could hunter myself over to Mickle Delving um, pop over to Sanson's farm and take care of that one. So, um, yeah. So that's why I go ahead and just pick this quest up sometimes, but I don't worry about like doing it too fast. I don't nearly tend to count on it as one of my 10 for the day. Oh, speaking of ones that do count for one for your 10 of the day though, is the horse races or the, the, well, I guess they're horse and pony races, right? Um, it, there's the one in um, in the Shire that's not too far from Shire Homesteads. And then there's the other one that's at the Breedland Festival Grounds where you pick up and drop off your wrapper quest. So that is really convenient. So if you're looking to try and um, squeeze in yet another quest, um, that's a good one. Oh, hey, I didn't open the box. What did we get? Six spring festival tokens. Okay. Or spring leaves. They are the currency of this festival. All right. Will you lend me your ear? Let's see if I get lucky this time. Probably not. I'm not a good clicker. I'm not fast. I'm not like, I'm both not fast and not accurate. <laughs> Those combined 
make it quite possible that I don't get to click on the shrew I'm trying to click on. And if you just click the button, it clicks the nearest shrew, which is not necessarily the giant shrew. Anyway. Okay, so yes, yeah, so it's festival time. Um, so um, if you are looking to learn more about how to get around in the festival, uh, what to do, where to go, all of that, um, you've got Fibro Jedi's guide, which um, we just posted, just use Ask Moo Bot to post there. So you've got uh, Fibro Jedi's um, Spring Festival guide is there. Lotro.com now also has a festival guide and they are going to try to, Cord was, has mentioned this, um, that he is trying to create pages on Lotro.com for each of the events that kind of gives an overview and like where do you start and, you know, kind of um, gives the kind of high level information. And then um, you can go to Fibro Jedi, for example, for more detailed information. He's got lots of pictures on, you know, where to find things and, you know, how to get around. Um, so that's another great resource. The wiki, uh, the Lotro wiki is also a really good resource for where, what to do in well, all the festivals, really. Um, also, if you're looking at the um, uh, housing items, um, Dianco de Mew or Deco de Mew is a fantastic website and they also have a lot of great information. They put up on the website every single housing item you can find in Lotro. So anytime there's new stuff, they go out there and they get it and they take pictures of it and take a whole bunch of pictures so you know what it's going to look like in your house. Usually the pictures are done I think in a Belfalos house um, is what it looks like to me. So, which is kind of kind of good because those houses are kind of the more, the most, uh, what's the word I want to use there? Um, they don't, they're not highly decorated, right? Uh, to start with, right? They're very s stark and, you know, in a, uh, uh, there's there's not a lot of colors or patterns or textures that you're competing with so so it's a good place for getting those kinds of um, template pictures <laughs> thank you there's the uh, deco de Mew, um, website link there also and then fourthly the other link that's there I didn't mention it's mine Woo. Um, so if you are a member of the In League and you're a member of the Ale Association here in the game, you may have noticed that you can go and deliver drinks to those people. And every time you deliver a drink, you get a badge of taste, you get, uh, or you get a badge of dishonor, and you also get um, some reputation with that faction. And because it's all the same people that you're delivering to, it is possible to basically double dip and you deliver um, an ale association drink to somebody and then you just turn around and deliver an in-league drink to that same person. So there have been a number of, you know, there's always people who are like, well, what's the best route or what's the most efficient way? And so that's a topic of conversation for, I mean, since the combined drink set came about really, so what, 10 years at least, <laughs> I think. Um, but anyway, so we, um, have a route that uh, we've kind of honed over the last number of festivals. And um, that includes me being a hunter taking us around, which is very useful. Um, and so we put that together in a video and there's a blog post also kind of making sure like, hey, make sure you pick up all the in-league drinks first. Make sure you're a member of both the in league and the ale association before you get started because you don't you won't be able to go and do that after you start um and in fact i don't even think you can start it actually now i think about it but like if you're already a member of the in league and you're like oh okay i'll do the ale association too like you kind of have to already be a, a member before you can pick up the quests <laughs> um but anyway so yes yeah, so we put a um I put a, a guide together there of um, how to do the whole series of quests. So 
Um, oh, you're a hunter too. Nice. Linder hunches. Um, you buy stacks of the in-league drinks, so you just hand them out as you go. Exactly, Ginger. That's exactly what you do. That's one of the steps that you want to do is make sure you have stacks of each of them. Um, you want to make sure that you have, like, your travel stuff. And there's a couple of milestones that can just really make it go faster. So, like, on day one, if you do the, the route a couple of times during the festival, Day, the first time you do it is, if you haven't already, is a great time to set those key milestones if you have um, extra milestones that you can use for that. It's really useful. <coughs> Excuse me. So, uh, Vinderhund just asks, how do you get in both leagues? So, B4 has posted a link to, um, in the preparation section of the blog post there, it has links to the two initiation quests. So you do the initiation quest for the in-league to start to become an in-league member. You do the um, initiation quest for the ale association to become an ale league member. Um, there is a deed for drinking all the brews from the bars in Ariador. Yeah, the, the for the in-league, the, oh, what's it called? <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so the Ale Association challenge starts in Thorin's Hall Inn, and then you just go from there. Um, let me see, in league. Okay, so in league challenge. Yeah, so there's the in league challenge. That's a different thing, but that's you must sample all of the local beers, ales, and wines found throughout Ariador. Um, and there's, I think, 24 different ones you do. So, funny thing is if you do the um there's five inns in the shire that where they send you off to go you know they're like oh i want to compete in this year's brew challenge but i've lost the recipe can you go to the library and you know find the yellowed recipe for me like those things right um so when you go in to do each one of those they give you a brew uh as a thank you so once you become an in league member then you drink that brew and it counts towards that um, towards that thing that you, uh, that you, that Ginjar mentioned, the deed for drinking all the brews from all the bars in Eriador. So there's, um, yeah, cause you got to drink stuff from like, um, the Forsaken Inn and Thorin's Hall and Prancing Pony and like all the Shire places. And yeah, it's, it's fun. It's all over the place. So cool. So you're an in-league member already. So you just need to become an Ale Association member. Nice. Um, yeah. And then in the Ale Association, sorry, in Thorns Hall, there's a, you know, a handful of guys there who are doing Ale Association stuff. They have a series of quests that are repeatable that you can get for, um, reputation, but you don't have to do that as part of the initiation. Um, I thought you did, uh, but then it turned out you didn't. And I was like, okay, that's good. Because there's one where you got to go and like, tell other dwarves like you gotta go meet be mean to them and i'm like i don't want to do that quest i don't like being mean to dwarves i don't like being mean to anybody <laughs> so like, i'm not gonna do that one uh so i was glad when i discovered i didn't have to do that one Stay a moment. now if you decide to do the combined challenge make sure that you start uh well make sure after you like have bought all the drinks um that you start by picking up the ale association um, quests to deliver because that's how it triggers for you to be able to um, pick up the fake drinks from various people. Um, with the in-league, you can just show up and be like, hey, you're an in-league member. And they're like, yes, I am. Hey could you go and find me this brew? And you're like, I certainly can. And then you've got an hour and you're like, here you go. It's in my backpack. <laughs> you know, they're like, golly, thanks. You know, um, so, so the nice thing is with the ale association, or sorry, with the in-league association folks, the in-league folks, they are, um, they, you can pick up the quest from them and turn it into them at this, you know, right there. Uh, as opposed to the Ale Association folks where you have to get the quest from an, an original quest giver and then go get the fake brew and then you can turn it into them. So the, the 
um, blog post and the video that we did, it, it includes all of that. So basically you start by picking up all of the ale association quests that you have an hour to do, pick them all up. And then you go and you grab, you know, the drink from the guy in Thorns Hall, the fake brew, stick that in your bag. Then you go and you like deliver here, pick up these two here, deliver here, pick up that one there, deliver here, deliver here, deliver there, pick up, pick up, deliver, deliver. You know, so it's like you're able to pick up things that you're going to be delivering later. Um, but it just, it's the route works out really nicely that way. Oh, I can close my inventory. I got my boots. It's so cute. It says these boots are made from stomping. And that's just what they'll do. One of these days, these boots are going to stomp all over shrews. Bum -ba -dum, bum -ba -dum. It doesn't say the bump them. That's implied, though. <laughs> oh, you can tell somebody's doing the flowers. Because, you know, they run from one thing to another and they disappear into the... Disappear in there. See, look, there's somebody disappearing. It's one of my kinnies. <laughs> Okay, the game will begin in 10 seconds, says the elf at the top of the stairs. She should have, like, festival announcer title. Because that's what she does. Okay. Um, oh, oh, oh. And also, if you have, if you purchased the um, Fate of Gundabad Ultimate Fan Edition, the big one. Um, make sure you have your Fateful Toolkit on you when you go and do the in-league ale association deliveries because each one of those deliveries gives you one of their badges. So the in-league has the, um, the badges of taste and the ale association has the badges of dishonor. When you deliver a beverage, they will give you one of those badges. If you have the um, Fateful Toolkit on you, you get a bonus one. So instead of one, you get two on every single delivery. It's, it's fantastic. Because what we've started doing is we go and do the deliveries. So we're getting, um, it, so you would get 11 normally. Oh, hey, I'm a shrewd gardener. I have defeated 160 shrews in the garden. Well, rock on. Hang on, that disappeared because I'm in combat, I guess. There we go. The Festival Garden of Delland is rife with pesky, pesky pests, and some very practical help is needed to help the guard rid the garden of its problems. Hey, oops. Hey, there's a giant shrew over there. Oh, not anymore. <laughs> I did not get the giant shrew this time. Another hero has defeated the giant shrew. Bom, bom, bom. That's okay. I will work on this one. I do not mind getting my tokens from this guy. Oh, sorry. I stole the shrew from my teammate, from my kinmate. All right, how many more do I need? I need one more. Oh no, I'm good. I have all I need. Cool, 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 cool. We'll turn that in. What can I do for you? Okay, so yeah, so what I was talking about was the Fateful Toolkit. So if you bought that package, and we were talking about this like an hour and a half ago, um, is it's the Fateful Toolkit, and it gives like the normal, you know, um, stuff like the Universal Toolkit does, but it also gives you, um, it grants bonus festival and landscape tokens, um, Wallet barter tokens when equipped. Bonus applies to landscape wallet tokens up through Gundabad level 140. Um, so that is worth having on because, for example, all of these festival quests that we're doing here, this is a box and it's probably going to have five tokens in it, um, but because I'm wearing the Fateful Toolkit, it'll give me six. Bang. So if you think about that, like I'm doing 10 festival events a day. Each one of them is giving me a bonus one. So I'm getting a bonus of 10 festival leaves every day. So that's kind of cool. Now, it doesn't work for the festivity tokens, which, fair enough. Um, let's see. But I got a deed. Oh, we got a new one. The Taming of the Shrews. And that is 400. Okay. Well, I'm eight into that one. 
<laughs> and then I would get a title Tamer of the Shrews. Cute. But we did do the Shrewd. I still have Smeller of Flowers on. I think I'm going to keep that one. Mm, yeah, so if you're looking for shrew pets, um, picking up the flowers, did that quest in Bree where the guy wants you to go pick flowers for an hour. Um, inside, sometimes as you're picking flowers, you'll find like a daffodil. And oh, there's a shrew tome. Um, so that's another way to get, I think it's the spotted shrew. So you'll end up actually having a bunch of them. I think I've had three so far. I've given a couple of them away already. <laughs> Um, so before it says, my favorite use for the badges of taste and dishonor is to convert them to festival tokens. Thank you. I was going to talk about that and I got distracted. Um, you can get six for two tokens. Oh, to, yeah. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just, I'm going to go over to, um, Mickle Delving real quick and we'll, I'm going to pop over to the bird or to the, yeah, the burden baby. Um, I'll show you. I'll just show everybody. We've got about eight minutes left here. Um, so there might not be enough time to do a full thing. Oh, and I've done my 10 festival things anyway, which is fine. Um, so I'm going to run over to Mickle Delvig and I'll show you what I'm talking about. What's up? I'll show you. I'll show them all. <laughs> I'll show them all. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can get the big shrew sometimes. Um, usually when there's not anybody else in there, <laughs> it's the best time for me to get it. <laughs> so if I go, uh, over here, so we're in Mickle Delving and we're going to go over here to the Burden Baby Inn and we go inside. So once you have enough reputation, uh, you can go into... You can get caught on things. Hold on. I get caught on the furniture all the time. You can go in this door back here, which takes you into the in-league, like their little um, hanging out room. Uh, it's like, I don't know, the in-league uh, common room, <laughs> if you like. So go over here to Frago Sandheaver, the in-league trader. And he will give you, well, you can get an ancient tome from him. That's how you how learn how to do the jig dance, which is a really cute dance. Um, and that takes uh, five of those badges of taste. And, um, but you can get a box of festival tokens. So let's, and it would only cost me two badges of taste to get a festival token. So with the bonus that we get with deliveries, that's one delivery gets me a box of these festival tokens. If I didn't have the bonus, it would still only be two deliveries that would get me this box of festival tokens. Okay, so I'll go ahead and buy one of those. And then what this does is it, and you might get these sometimes from a Hobbit gift, so you might have seen these before. So when you click on it, you get to choose which category do I want. So I can get six spring leaves, or I could get six anniversary tokens. Anniversary tokens are really hard to get, I think. So I might just do that right now. Um, you could get three midsummer tokens. I find midsummer tokens really easy to get during midsummer. So I probably wouldn't do that. Um, 10 fall festival tokens, uh, 12 farmer's fair tokens, or 12 Yule festival tokens. So you pick the one you want. So I'll go ahead and just do anniversary tokens. Why not? And you select that. And so then <laughs> that gave me seven anniversary tokens. It gave me a bonus one. Yeah. So I double dip there because I got a bonus one on the uh, barter token. And then I got a bonus one coming out of the box. That's pretty sweet. Oh, right. So when you do the ones that give you 12, you actually get 14. Yeah. I think I remember you did that because you get that bonus one for every 10. Uh, it's like a 10% yeah, bonus or something like that. So when you hit, anyway, it's basically one bonus for every 10. Um, yeah, so that's what you can do is, so that's what we've been doing is, um, we go and do a bunch of deliveries. Oh, you're doing the jig. I just realized. Nice. So if anybody wants to see what the jig looks like, Affidil is doing it right there. Um, well, heck I could join you on jigging. I'll jig with you. There we go. That's what the jig looks like from the, if you're watching it from yourself. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's what we do is we go, we'll do the deliveries. So we end up getting 22 of each token set, so, right? So we get 22 in-league tokens, we get 22 ale association tokens, and then you talk to the trader for that faction and uh, turn in two tokens 
and you get one of those boxes, and then you could use that to get festival tokens. So that's kind of how we jump started um, our festival token acquisition for Spring Festival, um, because there's just because again, it's the first time you know we've run it on on it's run on Treebeard, so we had a lot of things that we wanted to get, and Aphidil's trying to get all of the um, consumables <laughs> done. So that's a lot of. A lot of tokens. <laughs> 308 Yule Festival tokens per day for if you do, okay, yeah, that's a good point. So if you do the in league and ale association deliveries and you have the fateful toolkit, you would get your 22 and your 22, so 44 altogether, buy then um, 22 boxes and yeah, if you were doing the Yule Festival tokens, for example, which are normally 12 in a box, you would get 14 out of a box. So that is a total of 308 Yule Festival tokens that you could get per day for doing in-league and ill association deliveries um, with the Fateful Toolkit in every situation there. So that's pretty amazing. And yeah, and the, the Badges of Taste and Badges of Dishonor, there's no cap on those right now so that is nice you've got yeah you've got the ability to uh to really max that out you really go nuts with that as opposed to like the um um uh, festivity tokens which have a cap and the midsummer tokens which also have a cap um i'm hoping they don't add caps to anything else uh festival wise because man i like being able to just have them and then what i really like doing is having a whole pile of them and then the next year i can start off by buying the mounts right away so i can use the mounts from the you know from day one and the outfits and you know and all of that um and then i can kind of work on refilling the coffers you know over time and then it's also nice because then if i'm like busy or distracted or whatever so like in this case, I'm very interested in playing on Treebeard, but I've kind of let my other characters on other servers kind of sit. So if there was like a mount that I really wanted for those characters, I could just go buy it because I'd have the tokens from the previous year and I wouldn't have to worry about it, you know, getting tokens this year. Because like my character on Noor is just kind of sitting. My characters on, um, yeah, like Tied over on Evernight is just kind of sitting. Uh, my characters on Laurelin are active, but they're not, I haven't uh, taken them into the festival either, so they've been just kind of chilling out. I should make sure I get over and get them the, out of the mounts, though. That's a good, I should make sure I have those on those, too. Because I have two characters on, um, on Laurelin that I, that I play. One of them, she's more, um, of the, uh, of the social time. She's the one that goes to Green Dragon Fridays on uh, on friday which if you're a hobbit or a dwarf and you play on laura lynn um green dragon friday happens every friday at the green dragon in the shire over in bywater and it's at 7 30 uk time uh it's a great little role-playing event there's music and people tell jokes or stories and um a little gossip from time to time um it's it's a lot of fun it's a cute little role-playing event uh, goes for two hours and then afterwards we go outside and we light fireworks so it's a good time um so if that's something that you haven't heard of before uh you are uh, it's welcome to it's open to anybody and if you are a tall folk such as an elf or uh, a human a bjorning uh you know you're you are welcome as well but we do ask that you kind of stay in the back because you're so tall um, or just go and, you know, make a hobbit and come and join us as a hobbit. Because <laughs> it is a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to hang out with our, our hobbity friends. Um, okay, so we're coming up on time here. Um, so if there's anything you wanted to kind of talk about here at the end, um, before we end, I should say, now is the time. Um, let's see. So I mentioned, we mentioned festival. So we talked about that. Um... Let's see, the beacon is probably going on hiatus for a little while. So um, I won't be putting the beacon information in there at the moment. Um, every week there's sales in the store and those should be switching over here. Usually it happens around this time on my stream. 
So um, keep an eye out for that. The court is, I think, going to try and have um, like those store announcements popping up on Lotro.com. But for now, I know they're still in the um, in the forums. And then there's always the free coupon, the freebie, which is um, the green dye right now. So you put that code in greenery and you get one uh, free green dye. So um, I love dyes, so that makes me really happy. And then, um, let's see. And then let me tell you about Thursday, I think. Who all is on right now on Thursday? So I am here. <laughs> Hi. Um, Eldaleth will be on in about six hours, I think, from now. Um, Epic Uger is usually after her, but he's taking a break for the moment. Uh, French Girl Gaming was on about... Oh, 13 hours ago, I think. So if you are, you know, not on my time zone, um, you might catch her. Just make sure you come around on Wednesday as opposed to what today is, which is Thursday. So, all right. Well, I think uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. So if you um, are interested in all the plugins that happen that a lot of people use, I like to use a lot of them. You may have seen me using some of them today, like uh, Travel Window 2 over there and um, Deed Tracker, which I love. <laughs> um, there is a show that is all about plugins. That's on Tuesdays um, and before uh, streams on Tuesdays. And then I'm here on Thursdays. And you can always check my um, Twitter account because we both will um, tweet on that same account as to when either either of us are going um, to be streaming. So, awesome. Well, thank you, everybody. Um, oh, hang on a second. Oh, is she run? Okay, cool. So I just want to say thank you to everybody for coming here tonight. Um, we're going to go and do a raid on the Green-Eyed Gamer. She is another Lotro player, and um, she is... Uh, um, yeah, she's awesome. So we're going to go and raid her. So uh, before I, I sign off, I want to say thank you to everybody. And um, as always, I always say to uh, make sure you stay in touch with that Hobbit side of your heart, wherever you go and whatever you are doing out there. Okay, so let me um, make this raid thing happen. The biggest question is remembering how to do that. I always have to remember to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and then do I have to confirm anything? Okay. So when you're at Twitch, um, this will pop up. I don't, I don't know if it shows up in chat. And then you can right, read now and that'll end it. So you ready? Well, hold on. I'm bringing it up right now. Okay. Oh, you've got it? I've got it. Okay. All right. I think we are going to head over there. So we're going to go say hi to Green Eyed Gamer. All right. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Bring it up right now. Oh, you've got it? Okay. All right. I In any danger. <gasps> oh my goodness! We got, got Latro Raid, raid coming in with a raid. We got, got Latro Stream raid. coming in with a raid. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Welcome, Latro Stream. Thank you so much for that raid.